If you can't tell by now, I love video games. From big AAA games with elaborate stories to fun little games you play just because you need something to do. I've always been fascinated by the video game industry. How can a person make millions from an enjoyable process? Enjoyable for me, at least. This was my reaction watching the 2024 Game Awards, where I saw Balatro contesting for Game of the Year. Balatro. <laughs> Balatro, a game made by one person, probably like me, who just had an idea and decided to invest in it. He's making millions of dollars. This was my inspiration to get back on track and start making games again. But my experience with making games so far wasn't very pleasant. I mean, I made a couple of prototypes for game jams, nothing crazy. I spent a year working with Unity in Ditch for almost three years now. And after the pricing changes Unity went through, I think it's time to explore something new. So that left me with a choice for a new engine. And I picked Goloth. The main reason was the fact that it's open source, so no sudden pricing changes. Therefore, I could start the process, making a video game. I started by planning, of course, and since I had a clear idea of the game I was making, planning didn't take that long. I've always remembered the game I played as a kid about a plane dodging rockets and how you can quickly maneuver your spacecraft with explosions and near misses. It was exciting, but I couldn't remember the name of the game, so I decided to recreate that feeling. The problem now was where to start. I tried to jump headfirst into the engine and figure things out on the go, which worked for a short while. Until I decided to just watch a quick tutorial to at least get the right framing for the project. I tried to watch the necessary minimum so I wouldn't get stuck watching tutorials again. I broke down the game into objects and tried to carry on the workflow I learned in Unity to Godot, which worked, sometimes. I coded the game behavior in JD script, which proved to be a nice scripting language. The syntax is easy to get used to and it does offer more advanced features with well-written documentation. After finishing the code, I started working on the art. I tried to mess around with pixel art and made some sprites for the game. I also ended up using some already made assets because the process was tedious. And my goal this time was to just publish a working game. Didn't matter how it looked or who made what. I just needed to see the fruit of my work. That's why I also downloaded sounds and the music online. I added some screen shake and some explosions here and there. And finally, I made a game. A fully done, ready to play game. Of course, there is room to improve. But this is actually a game I can share with people and get feedback. This was a really eye-opening experience. You think you know your game inside out. But watching other people play reveals so much. With the help of some friends, aka playtesters, they helped me notice some bugs, features that could be added, things that could be improved. I made a list of the feedback and prioritized the most critical issues. This process was crucial. It helped me polish the game, fix bugs, and make it more enjoyable for everyone. You'd be surprised how easy to get tunnel vision when you're working on a project by yourself. So getting fresh perspective on it is essential. And here it is. It's a simple game, but it's my game. And that's what matters to me. I actually learned so much during this process. Don't be afraid to try something new. Godot has been a breath of fresh air. It's open source, powerful, and the community is amazing. I'm thankful I made this switch, actually. Planning is essential, but don't overthink it. Start with a core idea and build from there. Tutorials are your friend, but don't get stuck in tutorial hell. Use them to get started, then experiment and learn by doing. It's actually okay to use existing assets. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, especially when you're focusing on getting a working prototype out. And the best advice yet, finish something. Completing a project, no matter how small it is, is a huge accomplishment. This experience has reignited my passion for game development. Seeing other indie developers succeed showed me that anything is possible. And now I finally have a game I can call my own. So now, what's next? Well, I'm going to continue working on this game, refining the gameplay, adding more features. I also want to start working on new projects, explore different genres maybe. And most importantly, I want to share my journey with you. 
So if you want to try my game, you can play it now on your browser. I'll leave the link down below. And if you're interested in game development, I encourage you to give Godot a try. It's free, it's powerful, and it's a great way to bring your ideas to life. I also stream my projects on Twitch. So consider joining me. I'll leave the link in the description. I also post videos about game dev in general on YouTube, so tune in. And if you have an idea for a game, make sure you work on it. Who knows, you might make us the next Elden Ring.